We've got just two storytellers left, and that one, the ninth one, goes to Nestor, the boss, Gomez! Before I got out of the house today to come here, I look at myself in the mirror and I told myself, you are beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful. <laughs> you see, the first time that I heard somebody call me beautiful, I was eight years old. I was playing dress up with my sister. <laughs> Hold on. She, she was wrapping a blanket around my body as to form a dress and she was telling me, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. My father walked into the room and he screamed, men are not supposed to be beautiful. Men are supposed to be manly. He grabbed the blanket and ripped it away from my body. I don't ever want to see you playing these kind of games again, he told me. He didn't give me time to explain to him that I was just playing dress up because I wanted to play soccer with my sister and she had agreed to play soccer only if I played dress up with her first. <laughs> now, I didn't understand why my father was so upset but he didn't explain anything to me. You see, silence was the way that my father and my family dealt with things. A couple of years older, a couple of years later, I became really close with my uncle, who was a couple of years older than me. My father never had time for me, so my uncle was the one that taught me how to play with marbles. He taught me how to do origami figures. He was the big brother that I always wanted. It was beautiful to have somebody who would teach you how to do things. And my uncle and I used to go to a nearby farm to cut grass that we took back to the house to feed the rabbits that we grew at home. So one day when we went to the farm, my uncle asked me to do a favor for him. Now, I didn't want to break out that relationship with my uncle because he was the person that I look up to, the person that I trust the most. So when he asked me, to pull down my pants, lay on the ground face down so he could climb on top of me. I let him. A couple of days later, my uncle and I went back to get some more grass for the rabbits. And my mother sent my sister to look for us because we had taken too long. What are you guys doing? My sister screamed when he saw my uncle naked on top of me. He ran back home to tell my mother. After that day, my uncle was not allowed to be close to me anymore. But we never spoke about it. Nobody explained me anything. You see, silent was the way that my mother and my family dealt with things. Silent was also the way that I dealt with things. Because as I grew up into a teenager, I had very low self-esteem. I had a speech impediment. I used to stutter whenever I had to talk to people or in front of the class. You so need some kind of therapy. One of the teachers that was fond of me told my parents one day, therapy is for rich people that can't afford it and for crazy people, my father said. The next day, teacher called me into her classroom and told me, look, a friend of mine is a speech therapist. I asked him and he told me that you should talk to yourself in front of the mirror so you could get over your story. I nodded and I went home to practice. But I couldn't face myself in the mirror. I hated to see my face stuttering. It took me many years of trying to talk until I finally got over my stuttering. And it took me many years to break my silence that I could finally talk to my mom about what happened to me during my childhood. But it was only a couple of, a couple of years ago after I was going through my second divorce and I was going to maybe my fourth or fifth attempt at killing myself that I actually look for some therapy. I sat on the therapist's office and the therapist asked me, the therapist asked me, so how are you feeling today? And I immediately I felt anger. I wanted to take the shirt and throw it across the room. So I got up and I said, this is a waste of time. Therapy is only for rich people that can't afford it and for crazy people. And I started to walk out of the room. Before you leave the room, look at the mirror I have on the other wall the therapist saw me. 
And as I did, I started to tremble because I hated what I saw. I hated myself. It took many sessions with a therapist for me to finally understand that the sexual abuse I had been a victim of during my childhood wasn't my fault. I was just looking for love and I had been taken advantage of. And it took even longer for me to understand that beauty is not how people see you, how people treat you. Beauty comes from how you see yourself and how you treat yourself. It took me many, many sessions of therapy to finally look at myself in the mirror and not hate myself. So today, when I was ready, when I was getting ready to come here, I look at myself in the mirror and I told myself, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. Thank you. Mr. Gomez, everybody.